All right, so we've got the working capital schedule in. Uh, our balance sheet is looking pretty complete, but we still need to get this property plan and equipment number. So why don't we just forecast this as a percent of sales? Well, we could. Um, it could be driven by percentage of sales, for example, to make, you know, if each store makes $30,000 in sales and you need a new store to get another $30,000 in sales, you know, it, it could possibly work. But the thing is, property plan and equipment is made up of a few components. It's the existing property plan and equipment that you have already. It's the investments in new property plan and equipment, which is called the capital expenditures. And it's also the, the depreciation of the capital equipment. Depreciation is an expense that actually is removed from the property plan and equipment in what's called a contra asset. asset. So we want to build out a separate schedule to make up for the complications of this capex and depreciation and property plan and equipment rather than just doing a percentage of sales. It'll help build this three statement model that works together and flows through to each other. So I'm going down the property plan and equipment schedule. I pulled in the capex already from the cash flow statement in the, uh, in the 10K. I just pulled it from right here. Um, in addition to the depreciation, this is straight in from the cash flow statement. Now, why didn't I use the depreciation, depreciation we already had up here? Well, if you look at it, depreciation up here in the income statement is 98,454, and depreciation in the uh, cash flow statement is 93,773. Usually, the cash flow statement will actually yield a higher one. I don't know why it's lower here. I have again, I haven't looked into these financial statements in detail, but they're going to be different for a few reasons. The main one is that depreciation up here is depreciation for things that are not in COGS. There is actually depreciation in here. There's depreciation in here. There could be depreciation in here, depending on how the depreciation is classified. For example, if the depreciation is classified, um, if the depreciation is against something that has a direct correlation to the product, that depreciation will be in here. If it's general, for example, the depreciation on a computer used by HR, it might be in here. If it's something else completely, it might be here. So usually, this is not a good number to use, and you want to use the one in the cash flow statement. So I've done this. Um, we've actually already forecasted depreciation um, as a percent of sales up, up, up top. Um, you know, again, we can do this as a percent of sales if we want. I'm just going to do it again down here because this number is different. So depreciation as a percentage of uh, sales. This is a bad way to do depreciation. Do not do this, um, but I'm just doing this for simplicity. All right, so that's depreciation as a percent of sales. Uh, we've got CapEx as a percent of the sales. Now, why is sales the driver for CapEx? CapEx is just buying stuff. How is sell, selling driving the buying of stuff? Well, to make money, you need to spend money. Everyone's heard that, uh, but to make a new $30,000, you need a new store. So you need to invest in new kitchen equipment. You need to do uh, dining room equipment. All those things are capital expenditures. Um, and to make more sales, you need to spend more money. So you'll a lot of times you will see that um, you know this capex as a percent of sales will be high uh, before a growth period. All right, so we've done this. Uh, again, let's check and make sure that our averages, it's not too, so we could, we'll go from 15% to 11%. That's not crazy. I'm just going to continue using 11% rather than 15% going on. I'm not going to um, take the average here. Then capex and then depreciation as a percent of sales is actually not changing much, so I'll just use the average and that's okay. Again, we go here, equals this times sales to forecast that. And then I'm just going to copy this right and down. Oop, I didn't fix that. So now I'm going to copy it right and down. And we've got our depreciation. Wow, our sales are growing a lot. So our depreciation is actually growing a lot. I am going to. Okay, well, normally this would be a little bit ridiculous because um, uh, I'll, I'll show you in a second. So the beginning PP&E is the last component. We will take the property plan and equipment from 2014 uh, as the starting number for 2015. So that's here. And we'll just carry that over. So this is the, it's the 2015, it's this, but it's the 2014 number, start to 2015. And the ending property plan equipment is, you know, beginning plus 
all the additions minus the subtractions. And that's how you forecast out the ending property plan and equipment. Now, this is interesting. Uh, this didn't work. Oh, and then this is going to be the beginning for the next period will be the front one for this period. And now we've gotten this done. Okay, so our pp &E keeps going up. Now, remember what we said at the beginning, where we wanted this growth to level off at the end of the, the um, forecast period. We don't want to be growing when we stop our model. So we stopped around 2 or 3% growth in the last year because that's about the same you know, rate as GDP um, but if we're not growing that rapidly we probably don't want to be investing in CapEx more than our depreciation because we're not growing so they call this um, you know, this is matching this is matching your CapEx and depreciation um, because you want to basically replace the what's getting lost through depreciation with new expenditures. So if a table breaks, you want to replace the table, but if you're not growing, you're not going to replace one table with three. So by the end of this, you want to make sure that your CapEx is sort of going down so that uh, CapEx and sales, that's CapEx and depreciation are, are approximately equal. Um, so I'm going to actually do a formula here for CapEx as a percent of sales. And you want that ending period to be about one. Okay, sorry, capex is a percent of depreciation. You want them to be equal at the end of the period. So during the high growth, you're going to be have a lot of capex, and then it's going to decrease to the level of depreciation over time. This is rough. Um, if I were doing a real model, I would again be looking into this more deeply and making sure that I'm not just randomly adjusting these numbers but I'm just going to for now to show you that these should be equal in the last period. All right, so the last thing to do is take this ending pp &E. Oh, and we can see when I change these numbers, my CapEx changes. I'm not actually plugging in a new number here. I'm plugging in the new driver, always working with the drivers. Okay, uh, now we can take this ending pp &E and put it into our balance sheet. Right there. All right, we are looking pretty good. Uh, our balance sheet is basically almost done. We need to do a debt schedule. We need to deal with these retained earnings and common stock and the total equity, and we also need to do our cash. Uh, those coming up soon, and then we'll have a full working model.